Do you want to know how to solve problems with electric circuits? Just like that? Well, check this video. Hi, welcome to Physics Made Easy. Today we are going to work on circuits. We are going to solve this circuit by finding all the potential drops, all the currents, the power delivered by the battery, and the power dissipated by all the resistors. At the same time, I will show you many tips on how to solve this very easily. I recommend that you actually do it by yourself. So on the screen is going to appear now uh, the, the circuit with the questions. Try it and then come back and see if you found a solution. After that, I will solve the circuit for you and at the same time share many little tips. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back. How did it go? The first step is actually to look at the circuit, not to jump into the calculations first. Let's have a, a quick look. And to do that, we use the fact that we are going to draw the arrows for the potential drops and the currents. So here, I've got an EMF of 20 volts. So this gives energy to the charges, which acts as a pump, creating a current. The current is going to meet this resistor, so there will be a potential drop here. And then it meets a junction, so it splits in two into I1 and I2. Each of these currents will meet a resistor creating a potential drop. Then they meet again and form the original current I that reaches the internal resistance here, which acts as a normal resistance in the circuit. There's no difference. It's not because it's an internal resistance to the battery that it changes anything. You can just consider it like a normal resistance part of the circuit, so there's a potential drop there. So that was the first step. Put the arrows to try to understand the circuit. The second step is to try to find the main current, I. For that, you have to calculate the equivalent resistance. So let's do that. The equivalent resistance is equal to 7 plus these two resistors in parallel. So, if you have seen the other video I did about the tips and tricks about circuits, well, you just do product by sum. So it's 6 by 3, 18, divided by 6 plus 3, 9. So that gives you 2. And then, you just add this one, plus 1. So you have 10 ohms. Now, what have we done here? We simulated a circuit which consists only in the, in the battery and one resistance of 10 ohm. And this circuit <coughs> is equivalent to that one. So the current passing through is the same. So the current passing through, that was uh, 20 volts, is going to be equal to 20 divided by 10, that th therefore 2 amps. 20 divided by 10 is V on R. So in order to remember, actually, uh, if it's V on R or R on V, I just write V equals Ri somewhere on my paper. Like this, each time I need it, I just have a look at it. Okay, so now I have the main current. The main current, that is 2 amps. That's how we also have here, 2 amps. We can calculate potential drops. And this one, and this one. Why? Because out of two parameters, of out of three parameters, we have two. Here we have the resistance and the current. So we can easily find V, the potential drop here, which is equal to 2 multiplied by 7, so 14 volts. As well as here, which is 2 multiplied by 1, 2 volts. Now I can use the second law of Kirchhoff. Because I've got 20 volts minus 14 minus 2 volts, so minus 16 volts, I need to complete with 4 volts here. These two are in parallel, so I also have 4 volts there. 
And notice that here, I also have two elements out of three now. I've got the resistance and the potential, and I can calculate the current. Hey. So the current will be potential divided by resistance. So I1 will be equal to 4 divided by 6, so 2 thirds of amps. And here, 4 divided by 3, so 4 thirds of amps. If I want to check if I'm correct, I just add them together. 2 thirds plus 4 thirds equals 6 thirds, which is 2, and I do find the 2 amps here. So that's it. I've calculated all my potential drops and my currents. Now, I need to calculate the power delivered. What is the power delivered? It's the energy given to the circuit by this battery per second. And the formula to find this is very simple. The power delivered by the battery is its EMF multiplied by the current it generates. So it's 20 by 2. 40 watts. So if 40 watts enter the circuit, I have to have 40 watts that come out. So the total power dissipated will be 40 watts. Let's check this out. We are going to calculate the power dissipated by all the resistors. So remember the formulas for power dissipated by a resistor. It's either Ri squared, but if I replace one of the i's by V on R, I get Vi. Or, if I replace the other i by v on r, v square on r. So, depending on what is easiest to calculate, I can pick up any of these formulas. For instance, here, I find it more easy to calculate 14 by 2. So, 14 by 2 gives me 28 watts, which are dissipated by this resistor. I'll do the same here. 2 multiplied by 2, 4 watts. 4 watts are dissipated by this one. Here, I find it maybe easier to calculate 4 squared divided by 6, v square on r, giving me 16 divided by 6. Here, I've got 4 squared divided by 3, so 16 divided by 3. So that's actually 8 third here, and 16 third here. If I sum them, I know that this system of two resistors in parallel will give me 16 plus 8, 24 divided by 3, 8 watts. So let's check if all the power dissipated by the circuit corresponds to the power delivered. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 28 is 14. So the total of my power dissipated is 40 watts, which is equal to the power delivered by the circuit. So you see, it's quite simple. Quite simple to, to solve this circuits, which look complicated the first time, but step by step, it's like a puzzle, you know, you find a step, oh, that allows you to find this one, that allows you to find this one, etc. And it's a click. Once you get it, once, then you've got it for good. It can be very easy points for exams, which are usually quite hard. The IB physics exams or A-level physics exam can be quite tricky sometimes, but when it comes to circuit, it can be easy points to get. I hope this was useful to you. Don't hesitate to subscribe for more. Good luck.